All right, so again, thanks a lot, Matt and team, for having me here. Super excited to be here. Um, so my name is Rambir. I am the Senior Director of Dig Digital Product Management for GE Digital, and I oversee the automation portfolio. And so I just want to start off first by kind of talking about who we are at GE. Um, so at GE Digital, our focus and our purpose is really around our customers and really helping them with their toughest industrial challenges. And we really are trying to do that by really leveraging the industrial data that they have and putting it to work to actually really optimize what they're doing within their plant and within their opera operations. So across GE Digital, we, are, um, we, are, we have over 21,000 customers and we oversee um, the, the different markets, including power generation, grid, oil and gas, manufacturing and utilities. And across those customers, things that we are helping our customers with are things such as helping them be more compliant on quality and regu regulatory needs, uh, helping them increase their plant efficiencies, uh, helping them adapt to demand and different demands and keep their team safe and helping them increase productivity. So um, for our customers, one thing we're really focused on is helping them really support, uh, support them in regards to the current situations with COVID and in general as well uh, with the challenges that they face. And, and when we look at those challenges for our customers, the kind of key three things that are really um, important, one is uh, employee safety. And that's you know, safety for the employees and the plant personnel, as well as for the greater community. And secondarily, it's about really ensuring that the customers have continuity of service when they provide critical services to the community or critical products to the community. And lastly, it's about helping our customers support their customers when it comes to any type of situation or uh, anything they need really to be able to be successful in their day-to-day -day lives. So um, as this lockdown took effect with COVID-19, we had some of our utility customers reach out to us. Eh? And what they really had asked us was like, how can we help them keep their, their remote, uh, keep their operators and their plant personnel safe? And how can we actually um, create remote workers? And, um, so based off of that, actually, in a really quick manner, our team got together and we enabled this program to enable remote monitoring for our customers. And really with that goal of how can we actually make our customers be more successful in this type of situation. And so that is, um, it was a really great, amazing thing our team did and our customers did. And so I really applaud and proud of how we were able to work with our customers to make this a, a reality for all for the end customers. So I, the one other thing I also wanted to mention was um, very similar to what Matt was talking about is that software has become more and more mission critical for our customers. And when I say that we're only talking about is um, digitization of processes and operations. You know, a few years ago, people would be asking like, you know, is digitization and what's the ROI on that? At the time, we never had really thought or imagined something like COVID would come along and truly disrupt uh, operations of plants and utilities and manufacturing plants. And, you know, and as that has happened, it's even more relevant, the importance of digitization and being able to actually have digital software to be able to, to actually react to these types of severe disruptions. And it really, that digital software is really mission critical because it allows you to be flexible and sustainable in these type of different changing times and be able to adapt to those changes. So with that, I actually want to also switch to a quick polling question here. Uh, so uh, please, uh, Matt, I'll let you pull this up. Uh, and so one thing we were interested in learning about is what are actions you're looking to take to respond to COVID-19? And so what you'll see here is there's, four, there's uh, five answers. Uh, one is looking at how to improve change management. So as changing based on maybe it's, uh, you know, having to do more like production or more throughput. Uh, number two is looking at how to create more greater remote access for the plant personnel. Number three is more thinking about how to focus on social distancing and sanitation within the plant. And number four is looking at cost cutting measures. And, and last is um, none, making, not looking to make any, any changes based off of COVID-19. Yeah, Rambir, while we're waiting for the, the results to come in here, just a quick comment about the, uh, the interface side of it. So you should see a pop-up uh, that, that shows up on your screen with the, with the options, allows you to select one of the answers here. 
Um, if there's any issues just related to the interfaces with, uh, you know, be able to click the buttons or any comments or questions during the webinar, feel free to use the, the Q&A session down there. Preferably the Q&A, but you can also use chat. Q&A is the best way to ask questions and have them answered as you go through these sessions. So it looks like Rambeer right now, we've got almost all of them in. I'll wait another 10 seconds or so for a couple last clicks. No problem. All right, I'm going to end the polling now here. We had it up for about 90 seconds, so let's share those results. That's fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, you see there's definitely a strong trend there for the number one thing folks are looking for is greater use of remote access. And, and number two, uh, so it's about 75% was greater use of remote access, and number two was about 20% when it comes to social distancing and sanitation within the plant. Um, and so, yeah, so that's great. So thank you for the feedback there. All right. Um, and so to continue with uh, the presentation, um, so the other thing I just wanted to also articulate was what, do we, what is the prophecy portfolio capabilities that we are creating to, uh, to deliver for our customers? And we know it all starts with a, st a strong foundation. And for us, that foundation starts with having a scalable open and layered architecture and technology, having a system oper operability to be able to go from sensor to cloud. And then lastly, it's also making sure that we have highly secure by design solutions that are also highly available. And we build on top of that foundation with um, key capabilities and solutions when it comes to manufacturing operations management. And this includes our products such as plant applications and scheduler, uh, having HMI, extended HMI cap SCADA capabilities, so it includes our core HMI SCADAs of iFix and Simplicity, as well as extended capabilities such as workflow, batch, um, and so forth. And, and, and lastly, also, we focus on having industrial data management. And key pieces of this industrial data management is our GE historian, which Matt had mentioned as well, as well as our PDX manufacturing data cloud. And once we have those plant operation software, the other key aspect is how do you actually visualize that information for the end user to be able to access it. And really the focus that we have is um, providing our solutions such as Operations Hub to be able to have fast time to solution by having out of the box applications that can be rapidly customized uh, with no code. And secondarily is really making sure that we provide the ability for users to have situational awareness and accessibility to the right information at the right time to have a truly intelligent user interface across the entire enterprise. And lastly, it really comes to, as, as the polling indicated, is really enabling mobile workers. And that can be within the plant and moving around within the plant, but can also be outside the plant and really having uh, them to have the ability to have access to the right information at any time within within any of those situations. And combined with that, the other key aspect is cutting across all that is we're focused on, as I mentioned earlier, is putting the industrial data to work by enabling analysis analytics for plant optimization for our customers across all those products and all that data. So as, um, as over the multiple years of working with our customers, what we have seen as uh, being most successful when it comes to our customers is customers are able to actually uh, focus on these three pillars and be able to actually have a strategy for these three pillars. Number one being uh, enabling digital workers. So what this is all about is making sure that the plant personnel are able to make informed decisions at any time with the right information. And number two is all about enterprise visibility and scalability. So this is really about making sure that you have a complete picture of your plant operations or your enterprise operations. And when you have a complete picture, then you're able to quickly adapt to changes or things that you wanna adjust within your plant operations. And thirdly, uh, is once you have that visibility, it's really focusing on how can you actually use the, and the, not use, empower the plant personnel and the information you got from that visibility to enable continuous improvements and have a digitized continuous improvement platform to make that a reality. So it's really critical what we have found is to, to take incremental steps to get to a digitization uh, versus a big bang. There is no magic pill. Like if you try to like quickly say, okay, I'm gonna just 
one day become digitized, that's really hard to do and it's unsuccessful. And so really the goal should be it's incremental improvement along the way. So digging a bit more into uh, designing for the, um, the industrial worker, the modern industrial worker. The one thing we really are seeing is more and more is the operators within the plants are taking on greater roles. And they're really evolving from a, a traditional operator to a technician. And what I mean by that is their role more and more is about looking at multiple multitudes of different information and really trying to digest that information to really maximize the operational throughput of the different plants. And this really requires more of the operator when it comes to actual like brain power and, and context switching uh, if you don't have the right solution. And so a key focus of what we've been doing over the last few years is focusing on creating uh, a really a single plane of, pane of glass when it comes to the user experience for these users and making them the center of that universe so that they really have one place to access all the information and access the right information at the right time to make those decisions. And another key aspect of that is making sure, as I mentioned, the right information at the right time is having personalized user UIs then for each different plat personnel. And that could be an operator uh, who, is, who is actually managing and leveraging uh, processes and equipments within a water treatment plant. It could be a supervisor. Um, it could be actually uh, someone more senior who wants to look at actual what's happening within the plant or across plants for doing plant benchmarking. And that applies not only uh, from a utilities HMI SCADA perspective, it also applies from a manufacturing perspective as well. So we had that similar strategy there as well of enabling those personnel with customized tailored applications based on what their role is and what they actually require to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So once uh, you have armed um, your plant personnel with the digital tools to be successful, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that the other key thing is, is ensuring that enterprise visibility and scalability so that you're able to actually see what's happening and be able to make change and pivots in your operations to be most successful. Another key part of this is also be able to find opportunities for improvements. And so a key part of that coming back to the, uh, the putting industrial data to work is really having a foundation of a way to actually aggregate the data. And time series data from your operations is really critical. You know, it's all the alarms and events are coming through your operations. Being able to actually use that in a manner where you can aggregate it and collect it together, be able to actually store it and normalize it so it's stored most efficiently and be able to distribute appropriately to be actually to get visibility from there. And so really a key part of getting that more enterprise visibility is thinking about how you're able to actually scale your historians, not just at the, for example, plant level or site level, but also at an enterprise level. And so more and more we're seeing customers do this. They're really looking at ways to actually look across all their different, the entire enterprise to be able to scale up to really have consistency and normalization across the entire operations. And by doing this, really what you can do then is really have that holistic view with no gaps across all that data. And you're also able to have a reliability and consistency as well of all the information across all your plants and your sites. And then it helps you in regards to not just visibility, but also into regu regulatory reporting as well. And so um, kind of looking at that more from a a little more macro view. So as I articulated here is, so if you were like a water utilities customer, this can enable you to do things like have more remote unified operation centers. What I mean by that is by leveraging uh, the GE historian, you're able to then be able to have a more remote central location where you can do things like remote monitoring and control for both of your fleet and plants. You're able to actually create plant KPIs to see what's happening across the enterprise. And you're able to do things like uh, data analytics. And a good example of that would be, uh, you know, if you're doing the remote monitoring, one thing you have to make sure is that you do have good data. And so having things like a sensor health analytic to make sure that the actual data coming from the sensors is good is a key aspect of that. And this is actually one of the capabilities that we're adding in, in regards to analytics platform into the solution coming this year as well. So this is in the context of someone that would be scaling like a water utility customer and they want to leverage the historian. 
Um, we also have the ability, we enable the ability for our customers to be able to add production data to be able to see the, uh, across their entire supply chain. And we are doing this by a Predix Manufacturing Data Cloud. So this is a, a layer on top of time series that you're able to use to be able to actually, uh, in real time, uh, in a secure manner, manner uh, aggregate all the data from plant applications into the cloud to enable things like uh, benchmarking and reporting of a plant, what's happening within a plant. Also be able to do actual manufacturing analytics. Uh, and then one key part of this, of doing the analytics is when you put all the data into the manufacturing data cloud, is in the structure of an S95 model that is normal, normalized across all the plants. And then lastly, I'd also be able to do things like optimizations then of your process and every assets by using that normalized model of, of S95 across all your plants. So once you have aggregated the data, a critical piece is what is data without um, actually being able to see the data, right? And so a critical aspect is leveraging uh, operations hub and those types of tools to be able to visualize the data. And so once you have the data, now you're able to actually then using something like operations hub, uh, have a single source of truth, be able to actually access data and visualize it anywhere, anytime on any device. And how are we doing that? Um, the key thing that we recognize with our customers is uh, many times, you know, our customers will have single plant or multi plants, but when you have multi plants, it could be due to acquisitions, for example. And so you will have different technology in those plants. And so one of our key goals with real-time visibility with Operations Hub is providing you a way to connect to all those systems. And so those can be GE systems, such as our plant applications, our historians, our iFix simplicity and tracker. Uh, it can be third-party systems. And that could be, for example, if you want to get in weather data to actually see what's happening when it comes to seasonal changes relative to what you're doing when it comes to your your water treatment process. And you're able to do that using standard technologies such as MQTT, REST, SQL, and OPC UA. And, and the other key aspect of that is, uh, is being able to connect to other data within your system. So many times we have seen with our customers as well is they're doing things like, for example, they wanna add cameras within the plant and be able to connect those cameras into that single pane of glass as well, as well as third-party systems. And that could be like a, like a CMMS, that could be uh, for example, even a third party historian. So once you have that, that plant and operations visibility at an enterprise level, you really have set yourself up to be able to now see where there's opportunities for improvement and enable that continuous improvement cycle, life cycle. And so let's go into a little bit more details of how you're able to do that. So here, really um, what we're enabling with, with Operations Hub is a rapid application development environment. So coming back to what Matt had mentioned earlier today, um, the ability to have out of the box applications is, is what we're enabling with Operations Hub, but also be able to, be able to customize those in a really rapid manner. And so the, the idea here being is that you start with something, your plant personnel uses it, but you empower the plant personnel to give you insights on how to make things better. And then you're able to very rapidly in a couple of minutes, tweak your interfaces to make them more optimal and to see how you can actually make the plant personnel most successful. And so some use cases for this, as you'll see at the bottom here in this picture is just some examples of what our customers are doing. And, and the first example there uh, is actually a screen that was created by a plant supervisor. And in this plant, what, what the customer is doing is that they actually, during like shift changes, they will talk to the plant personnel and they ask them for ideas or improvements. And then they take those ideas and they actually implement them within the digitized processes that they have. And then they actually let them try them. And as they see it, they work, they tweak them and they make them better over time. And so really, it's really this circular cycle of getting ideas from the plant personnel, being able to quickly create a, a solution off of those and then be able to actually test that solution and tweak it over time. Um, the second example here is another one of our customers were more in the manufacturing space. And with this customer, really what they were looking at was how to look at things like um, energy management, utilities tracking across the plant, as well as be able to do ad hoc analysis and enable everybody within the plant to do it. And, and as they were doing that and, and they were creating 
more customized uh, applications for our different personnel, they were actually overwhelmed with the amount of asks that they had. And so it actually, uh, it naturally led to them enabling more of the personnel to actually have ability to use the tools uh, to create ad hoc analysis and ad hoc pages. And really that was a way that then they empowered them to actually be a part of the process. And so once they did that, uh, what they enabled was letting those plant personnel then actually have reviews with the supervisors on what they had discovered. And then the supervisor would have the ability to promote those to more plant level dashboards to share with the, the entire team. And then the, the next one you see there with anomaly detection is taking that to the next level when it comes to actually leveraging analytics. And, and with this customer we had, uh, what they actually have done is, as I mentioned earlier with Operations Hub, you have the ability to co connect to a, a multitude of different sources. And so what they did is they actually connected to different IT and OT data using Operations Hub. They leverage Operations Hub with this modeling capabilities that uses OPCUA to actually create meaning and context across those different data sets. And once they did that, uh, they used our APIs to pull the data out that was now contextual, run an analytic on it, and then actually take the results of that, push it back into Operations Hub to actually visualize the anomalies that they detected through the analytic. And so really, as you can see, that's a very powerful way to do things where you're able to now really get that visibility, but then also add leverage that visibility and that contextual information and model it that you've modeled together to actually create optimizations. And then lastly, I just want to also show this example with uh, what you see here is like a custom mobile application. Um, and this was another customer and really what their goal here was uh, try to reduce the time between when a plant personnel has an issue and enabling that to be enabling somebody like a supervisor to respond to that issue. And so they actually created a notification mechanism leveraging Operations Hub with customized applications where, uh, where folks within the plant, even on their smartwatches, actually could get notifications when there actually was an abnormal situation and need for someone to address it or need some assistance. So really, um, and one thing I also want to add to is when it comes to continuous improvements, to be able to scale that, you really want to be able to leverage analytics. And so with our Prophecy CSense solution, um, what we have really done is enabled process engineers to have analytics be more accessible to them by really democratizing the solution and the tool set. And what I mean by democratization is make it easier to use. And so take away some of the complexity uh, and some of what you have to do to actually mine the data by creating an easier way to actually do that with a more simpler tool sets. And that's really what CSense does. And by leveraging CSense then, you're able to actually embed analytics within your plant operations and processes uh, across the uh, GE Prophecy portfolio products. And so I also want to talk a little bit about how does this look uh, in regards to um, how do you go about the continuous improvements and what is kind of the journey we see customers do. And this really comes back to the three pillars we talked about earlier. Um, and so, you know, one of them being the number two was about visibility and transparency. So that's, you know, really where you start when it comes to continuous improvements is you would need to have really have visibility and transparency into what's happening in your operations and access to that data. And the key parts of doing that is digitizing your processes, uh, is making sure you have good quality data. So it really comes back to thinking about like, you know, do I actually have good sensors? Is the data being aggregated correctly and stored appropriately within my historian? And once you have, you can ensure you have good quality data, then you're able to actually do comparison, comparative analysis and analytics on that data. And that enables you then to be determined places of improvement. And so once you have determined places of improvements, then it's really about having the right tools to start acting on those improvements and doing analysis of that data. And so this is really where tools like Operations Hub with the out of the box analysis app come into play as well as uh, CSense as well. And so it gives you the ability to do that ad hoc analysis, uh, identify resolutions to those problems, but also with the ability to be able to as you start doing those types of analysis is to create some more um, structure around the data where you can model the data so you can actually then standardize uh, things like the definition of equipment or processes across your operations. And as you do that, you start figuring out those resolutions. The next natural step is going to leverage the analytics. And so once you've created that model, 
you're, you can, then you can, and you figure out a way to actually do something for one piece of equipment or for example, one line within your plant, what you can then do is leverage analytics to automate that and scale that to be able to do it across the entire plant or across the entire enterprise. And really what that is about then is really providing more uh, intelligent operator assistance, advanced warning and forecasting and intelligent decision making. And in this regards, we are going to be providing out of the box uh, analytics to our customers, but we are also enabling our customers to create their own user defined analytics by leveraging technologies like CSense. So, so that is the, uh, the three pillars and how we're delivering them. I want to go into a little bit more details about our roadmap as well. Uh, and as before I do that, I also want to mention, so um, I will be sharing future uh, releases and where we are going. And so this is general direction and we're going with the products uh, and this is subject to change as well. So from our roadmap perspective, it really comes down to those three pillars again. We're really focused on, on making sure we can help customers realize a digital worker, realize that enterprise visibility and scalability, and we can help them really realize those continuous improvements by having that digitized uh, platform for continuous improvements. And, and so how are we doing that when it comes more specifically to products? Well, when you look across our iFix and Simplicity HMI SCADA products, Historian and Operations Hub, our focus is how do we actually really simplify the connecting and configuring in a more integrated manner? How do you actually manage the data and how you visualize the data? And really focused on leveraging your model to actually streamline that. And so what we've actually been doing is actually we are been looking at, at how customers actually use our products and how, what the actual current journey is for them. And actually even going to the point of timing that journey and finding ways of actually optimizing that, reducing the time to manage those systems. And, and we know that for, with our customers, uh, HMI SCADAs, uh, these types of solutions, they're living and breathing systems, right? And they're continuously being changed and tweaked. And the more we're able to actually help you do that in a more rapid manner, the more successful you'll be with your operations. And so a key aspect of that with like, this mock-up you see here is bringing these things together, leveraging web technologies. And so having a single place where you're able to actually connect to different sources, and that could be, for example, via OPCUA, uh, connecting to a piece of equipment eh, or industrial computer or PLC. Then being able to actually have that same place to be able to actually pull in the data and the structure that comes from the PLC and be able to model it using technology such and, and um, standards such as OPCUA to actually do that modeling. As you do the modeling, be able to create the appropriate tags, not within just the SCADA, but also within the historian. And then directly go from actually doing that modeling to leveraging that from actually creating uh, visualizations for everybody within the plant personnel. From a manufacturing perspective, the way we're really looking at uh, enabling those three pillars is, uh, is what we see right here when it comes to unlocking efficiencies for manufacturing. And so uh, we're really excited to release um, Prophecy Plant Applications 8.0 last year. And this is truly the first single uh, multimodal MES. And what does multimodal MES means? What it really means is that we have enabled now with a single platform with plant applications for you to be able to do not just process manufacturing, but also discrete manufacturing. And so really what you're, we're doing now is by giving you the single platform, we let you be able to normalize the context of all production across all sites, independent of it's, it's more continuous or it's more discrete. And so how does that look when it comes to releases? So I showed earlier, um, what is the prophecy portfolio capabilities? And uh, on the left-hand side here, kind of in the lower area, what you see is uh, plant applications 801. So this comes back to the area of manufacturing. So uh, some things we're releasing this year is plant applications 8.1. And so some of the key features there will be adding some more discrete manufacturing capabilities. Uh, doing things when it comes to technology such as full Docker support to uh, streamline the actual updating of the software through containerization, as well as continue to create more optimal uh, interfaces for the plant personnel and the operators by having out of the box applications and widgets for waste and schedule view in this release. And we are continuing to also on the Predix Manufacturing Data Cloud, if, uh, if you remember from earlier, 
when I talked about that, that is a way we are actually bringing the plant application data into the cloud and normalizing it. We'll continue to actually advance that as well with the, the PDX MDC uh, 1.3 release. And in regards to this being a cloud-based offering, we'll have continue, we are having continuous releases every single quarter of that as well. From a HMI SCADA perspective, uh, we're super excited with uh, the coming up release of iFix 6.5. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, when it comes to our strategy of enabling people to be more rapidly be able to connect, manage, and build their solutions, uh, this is where we're actually now starting to incorporate object-oriented technologies with modeling into iFix, as well as templating. So really enabling you to now be able to take what you're getting from the controllers, and if it's structured, be able to use that structure in your SCADA to rapidly build out your solution. And the other key aspect of I-665 is now unlocking Operations Hub as a truly web-based, HTML-based visualization uh, to create your HMI SCADA and plant operations applications off of that SCADA data. We are continuing to also do investment and releases of, of Prophecy Batch. And so what, uh, what will be the next release for Prophecy will be Prophecy Batch 5.6. And what this includes is now SVN support for elect electronic work instructions as well. And when it comes to uh, Simplicity and Tracker, so Simplicity being our other HMI SCADA and Tracker being uh, our, our MES for high speed uh, manufacturing, uh, we also there are integrating with Operations Hub. So as you can see, our common theme of Operations Hub is visualization across plant applications, iFix and Simplicity is a key aspect of what we're delivering for our customers this year, as well as other capabilities such as uh, having enhanced routing configuration for our customers. And then from a, a Prophecy Historian perspective, relatively soon we will have the Prophecy Historian 8.1 release coming out. And then later this year, we have Prophecy Historian 9.0 coming out. And the exciting things with the 9.0 release is coming back to how to, is we're really focused on enabling that scaling of Historian for customers by enabling things such as remote collector management and enterprise management of multiple Historians. And really the idea being here is making it easier for our customers to manage uh, multiple deployments of Historian within their plant and enterprise. And so that's kind of the key capabilities when it comes to our core products from operational perspective. And then from a visualization perspective with Operations Hub, uh, we have released just recently the Operations Hub 1.6 release, which added full REST support for connectivity. Um, shortly, and rel very shortly, we'll be having the 1.7 release come out, which will have a relational database connectivity. And we've also done some greater improvements when it comes to scalability performance and single sign-on. And then later this year, in line with the iFix 6.5 release and Simplicity and Tracker 11.1, will be Operations Hub 2.0. And that is really the release that will unlock the ability to do visualization of our HMI SCADAs within Operations Hub. It also is a, when, when we will release a workflow integration um, with Operations Hub. So this is now incorporating standard operating procedures into Operations Hub off of your G Prophecy portfolio products as well. And then lastly, on the right-hand side, you'll see is um, the other key aspect of uh, enabling an analysis analytics for our customers. And so another great thing that we're releasing is enabling uh, more of an analytics engine via CSense with Operations Hub. And one of the key initial analytics we will have is sensor health, which will enable you to be able to ensure that you have good quality data coming from your systems. And, and also um, we're really excited with our next uh, CSense release. So as I mentioned earlier, so CSense is really is about democratizing the tools when it comes to process engineers to enable them to build analytics. Uh, the the 7.0 release will be coming later this year and it will really be the focus of integrating with our other products such as Operations Hub, Plant Applications and Historian and OPC Connectivity for HMI SCADAs. All right, and with that, um, I just wanted to say thank you again for everyone for joining the call. I, I, I know this is a challenging time and this is a, a d definitely a different way of doing a conference. So I really appreciate everyone joining and, and thanks Matt and team for giving me the opportunity as well. 
Yeah, thanks, Rabir, for uh, presenting that. A lot of great stuff going on with GE. Excited to see all the stuff that you guys have in the works. So I want to kind of flip over here now to some questions that have come in and also uh, open this up for some additional questions, comments, discussion with the group. Um, before going into them, just want to kind of re-go through again some of the housekeeping side that I know these days everybody's probably used about 27 different web conferencing platforms. <laughs> So with, with the Zoom environment, you have a couple different ways you can ask a question. So first and foremost, the best way to do it is through the Q&A. We've got a couple here that we're going to go through that we can answer live or, or respond uh, to the questions interactively. Um, you can also chat, it works, but Q&A is preferred. And then if you really want to speak and have a conversation about it because you prefer that approach or you know it's a little more of a complicated answer, what you can do in the session is actually raise your hand. Um, and it'll actually show us the, the presenters, the attendees that you have your hand raised, and then we can enable you to talk. It's just too hard to enable everybody in a group of this size to talk all at once. So if you really, really want to ask a question, click the raise your hand button. We'll flip you over on audio, let you talk, and then have a conversation. So hopefully that sounds good. All right, so jumping into the, conver uh, into the, the Q and A here, Rambi, your first question for you is from Michael, and it's actually about um, you know the, the approach when it comes to deploying these applications with the development of mobile applications. Can you speak to a little bit about what customers are doing with, with this approach? Sure, uh, yeah, I, I'd love to do that. Um, so, you know, one of the reasons we went to really a web-based technologies and we're looking to use web-based not just for configuration for runtime, is really when you have a client server type of technology like that, you're not required then to update each client. And so that's a key piece. Um, and so what we're seeing customers do is, uh, is um, what we're, is scale on the server side of having what they want is they want to have, have more central servers where they're able to actually then do all their configuration and then push it to all the clients. And and so many cases where we're all seeing is then, you know, a focus of reducing IT costs by doing that as well. So you have your IT team having to manage less servers, less systems by having that more centralized solutions as well. Thanks for that. That helps. Um, just to kind of go through the question, I'm going to knock this one out right away because somebody sure. smart and funny here. Uh, this question, <laughs> this question comes from someone at Automatech, but I'm not going to name their names. They want to know what kind of shoes you're wearing when you're stuck indoors all day, and knowing that no one will see them. <laughs> that is a good question. So. I do actually have indoor sneakers. Um, and so for, for a deal asking this question, I am a sneaker fan. So I, I do actually still wear Adidas uh, sneakers at home as well. But I also deal, sometimes I do also go barefoot uh, at home. So I kind of mix it up between <laughs> sneakers and barefoot. But uh, yes, I'd still go with my kind of traditional Adidas black sneakers as well. Yeah, thanks, Neil, for a little bit of humor there. We're, we're not going to be asking the question about who is or who is not wearing pants. We're just going to come <laughs> out of this conference all week, but I am wearing pants, just let you know. Um, next question here on the list is uh, regarding plan applications 8.1. What are the timeframes on release on that right here? So it is um, relatively soon. Um, I almost forget what month it is now because of being at home all the time, but it, it's in like the the – the June, July timeframe. So it's, it, we're actually re releasing it relatively soon. And actually the operations have 1.7 release will be the same time. So they'll both be aligned. And so that enable, the enablement of the um, of SQL will be, and the scalability will be partially also released. Well, not partially, it'll be released in line with the 8.1 release. Thanks, Ramir. No problem. All right, we've got a, a good fun question here for you. This is always a <laughs> interesting one to, to answer. So Jeff here asks, uh, why is GE still supporting 2HMI platforms, iFix and Simplicity? Uh, can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, I can talk about a couple of ways. One, one reason why we're supporting the two platforms is we, we want to really support our customers and we don't want to leave any customer behind. And, and so a lot of our customers have invested a lot of, uh, of dollars into those products and we want to continue to actually support them uh, over time with those products. But what we are doing, um, as I kind of showed you with that, that quick mock-up there, is looking at ways to bring things together. So what we have done over time is now both uh, Simplicity and iFix are OPC UA. Uh, they both support OPC UA, so they're both OPC UA servers. And by doing that, what we're doing on top of that is we're creating common configuration, common app building moving forward to actually have commonality across both systems. And so so you we will start having more uh, centralized solutions across both products, but we'll continue to support both engines so we can continue to support our existing customer base as well. Great. Thanks, Rambir. No 
And again, just as, as a reminder, if you want to uh, speak verbally, if you prefer to do it that way, just raise your hand and we can flip the, the mic on for you. So just get the little blue hand icon. We'll see it on our side. So next question here in the list is, uh, I believe, regarding Operations Hub and uh, Proxy Plan Applications Connector. Can you can you talk to that? Uh, yes. Um, so so sorry. I apologize if I didn't show it in the roadmap, but uh, I, even now with the 1.6 release, um, you can actually connect to uh, to plant applications, um, and that's via REST. So we added um, the REST capabilities with 1.6. So that's there today. And we have both REST get, so we can actually get data to visualize this, as well as put to be able to write back. And so with plant applications, um, all the uh, plant applications, like the entire server and system is actually exposed via REST APIs. And so, uh, so by having that REST connector, you're actually able to connect to plant applications and visualize any data and customize it as well. And so, um, uh, so with the, I hope I get the release right here. It was 8.0 uh, uh, with our 8.0.3 8 release of plant applications. From that release moving forward now, um, the out-of-the-box applications are all actually in Operations Hub. And so you, you will start with the out-of-the-box applications in Operations Hub, and then you're able to use that REST connector to be able to customize those and each create your own customized uh, uh, manufacturing applications for your personnel as well. Great, thanks, Rambir, for clarifying that. That's, that's that's helpful. I, I have to share one of the comments that came through on the on the chat window. I, I think I think it's a compliment. I'm not really sure, so I'll leave it <laughs> as a compliment. Um, it's John, and John says, "Hey, GE, you should be proud. You only have two HMI SCADA system. One of the major players out there in the market, not mentioning any names, has half a dozen. So imagine trying to explain that one. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. Oh, and he added to it too. He said, uh, "It's a compliment." <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, ask a couple other uh, uh, quick questions here. Uh, let's make sure I do these in the right order. I don't want to steal anybody's uh, no list. No problem. All right. So, uh, this is regarding uh, future release releases of Operations Hub. What's the plan or strategy for compliance with uh, older versions of plan applications like 6.3 or 7.0? So, I, I, uh, Joe will talk about this more also in uh, in the Thursday session. Uh, Joe Gerstel, who who oversees the manufacturing, I believe it was with the 7.0 release where um, plant applications exposed the REST APIs. So you will be able to actually connect. And uh, we'll we'll verify with Joe which release it was, but I believe it's 7.0. So you can actually connect to a, a 7.0 system with the Operations Hub today. Um, regarding 6.3, I will actually leave that to Joe uh, on. Um, in, in regards to that, uh, but you will need to update if you want to now have Operations Hub as the container um, to 8.0. Um, and but but like I said, so we will be backwards compatible. Uh, one at, with the release where our, where uh, plant applications had exposed the REST APIs. I believe it was 7.0, but uh, Mr. Gerstel will be able to give you more details there on Thursday as well. So please join the Thursday session. Yeah, that's a good point. So the Thursday morning session at 9:15 Eastern. This, that's going to be in depth on. Uh, the strategy in the manufacturing space, Joe Gerstel will talk to that and probably go a little bit deeper than, than this high level session that covers across the board. Thanks, Rambir. Well, so next question on the list here, Rambir, is regarding uh, manufacturing data cloud, MDC, and kind of the state and status of that. Um, can you talk to some of the use cases around uh, manufacturing data cloud or MDC? Sure. Um, so um, we have found, uh, we actually over time, the focus first was, as I mentioned, was providing a way to have that kind of standardization, normalization of data, the data, be able to start doing dashboarding. Um, uh, so that way you can actually see what's happening across the enterprise. And we do have customers doing that today. Uh, and some large customers, like for example, P&G is doing that. Um, but also what we have found is uh, the other advantage of this is you actually reduce the, the IT infrastructure you need uh, on premise for plant applications, because what you can do now is you offload a lot more of the data into the cloud, which actually makes um, you need require less horsepower on premise as well. So there's kind of a twofold aspect of that. Um, then, then so once you have that data, so what we're working now on is actually enabling more out of the box analytics for things like looking at um, process bottlenecks. And so a, process, a part of what we're doing with our, our operations performance management within our, our GE business units with manufacturing op, uh, 
uh, business units is looking at ways to actually identify the bottlenecks in that process and then be able to find ways to actually optimize those as well. And so there's like a couple of use cases. One is offloading data and, and making your your plant applications MES on premise later. Uh, two of that visualization and comparison of plants and dashboards and KPIs. And three is then trying to identify bottlenecks and create improvements there as well. Thanks, Rabir. Appreciate that one. All right, next question here is regarding uh, some of the integration components of, uh, of Operations Hub. So the question is, uh, when and will Operations Hub be able to display the structured data from something like uh, batch or batch analysis? So we are, are working on that. I don't have a definitive date, but but our goal with the Operations Hub and um, the OPCUA model that we have in Operations Hub, we're actually leveraging that same model and the same services with IFIX uh, as we're creating 6.5 to have model support. In similar way, what we're looking to do across batch as well as tractor and plant applications is expose uh, the structure and model via OPCUA and what we'd like to call a federated model. Our goal is we don't want to duplicate or have a central model where we take all the data and, and duplicate it a second time, we want to be able to reference those sources. And so what you'll see even with the current release is, um, like if you're using histori historian tag, uh, what you're doing with the model is you're actually referencing the historian tag via that OPCUA model structure. And our plan is to do the same with the other systems as well. So that is coming um, incrementally, as you can see, we're adding more and more integration across the portfolio with the operations hub. I don't have a definitive date right now, but we are working on it. Too. Thanks, Rambir. No All right, next question also uh, related to Operations Hub is uh, the question about how, how does it support high availability or redundancy? Uh, great question. So um, what, what we have done in uh, this 1.7 release, uh, a first step of that is we first focused on scale of single server. Uh, so with the 1.7 release, uh, the number of users, depending on the having the appropriate hardware, will be, will be around 300 users per server. And, and then what we're looking at also doing in this release is uh, one of the key areas we thought of uh, focusing on for high availability was what we call UAA, which is um, the way you actually do authorization. And so that's being starting to be built into the 1.7 release. And then post 1.7, we're looking at doing high availability also when it comes to um, the server side and any data storage we do, because we do have a model service. Uh, and so we do actually store data when it comes to the aggregation and the federation of the model, and that will be coming in, in follow-up releases. So we, so yeah, so, so the net sum of that is, some of that will be in 1.7, and some will be come after 1.7 as well. So it is, it is one of the key things we're focused on. All right, thank you. So again, continuing on some of these operations hub questions, a lot of great questions from the group here. Really appreciate this. And again, we can keep going. We have some buffer time here. We actually have an extra 29 more minutes. So if you guys want to kind of go through and ask some more questions, this is, this is good. Uh, two somewhat related questions around OPC UA connectivity or capabilities in operations hub. Um, this is actually two questions. I'm going to combine them. First is obviously there's a lot of talk around OPC UA but how about support for DA or HDA? And then the second part of that is, what about OPC UA, TSN, or time-sensitive networking communications? Any thoughts so, on those? Um, so th that's a great question. So I'll, actually, I'll, I'll bring up a few things here, something that wasn't asked as well. So um, what we, we will have OPC UA, and one thing we focused on was uh, not just having OPC UA connectivity with the tool release. We also want to enable of browsing those OPC resources to make it easier for you to be able to get the data and not just from our SCADAs, for example, but also from third party systems. Um, in the roadmap, once we have uh, UA and we will have the relational database connector, um, the other connectors we're looking at, one is specifically is HDA to enable our customers when they have, for example, a, a, a multitude of different historians be able to connect to them. And we're also looking at, um, um, Okay. OData is another one we're looking at. And so OData is another um, way a lot of folks are exposing relational data, like in, for example, databases. Uh, and it's, a, it's a more, um, becoming more and more industry standard. So that's another thing we're looking at uh, to add. And so HDA will be coming uh, in the future. Uh, OData is also we're looking at. And then the other thing, um, I'm curious, and this might add additional questions. We are also looking at um, enabling more in regards to 
a more pub sub model when it comes to aggregation of multiple piece, pieces of equipment. So looking at things like MQTT or using OPC UA pub sub model as a way to do a more federation. So in those situations, when you have a more distributed assets, like for example, it could be like an oil and gas customer um, and you want to be able to federate uh, that into what's at each, each single asset with the model to a more central unified operation center. So we're also looking there at, at creating that kind of uh, a bridge using our Predix Edge technology to be able to actually federate that in a more seamless manner as well. So I think I, that is for the question. Was there anything else that I missed, Matt? I think you got it. I think the only thing that might be hanging out there is around OPC UATSN. I don't think you specifically answered that, but if there were any plans to support that version of the, of the stack. So it's a good question. I, I will have to, I will actually Take that offline. I'll come. I'll make sure I answer the question. I'm not sure where we are in regards to looking at that. Uh, I'll chat with uh, Doug, our architect, and Dave. Um, so we haven't currently had that in plan, but uh, I will follow up. Now, also, I'm interested in uh, what type of scenarios you're looking for that uh, as well. If you could provide some more details, that'd be fantastic. Please reach out to me, or I'll reach out to you as well. Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely follow up on that one. Um, my understanding of, of TSN is more for uh, deterministic control, machine to machine communication. Yeah application software, but we'll, we'll get clarification for you on that. Okay, perfect, thank you. Good stuff. Um, on uh, Continuing on the operations hub question path here, I've got another one around uh, operations hub and cloud deployment. So uh, do you see customers, do you have customers around here that are deploying operations hub and cloud platforms like uh, Azure AWS or Google Cloud? Uh, so yes, uh, we actually do. So, um, and it's something that we're looking um, across the board uh, to actually enable uh, in more greater fashion over time as well. So we currently have a, a customer who actually has a AWS private cloud and they have deployed operations hub there. And what they have done is, um, in this case, it was an automotive customer. And so they have tracker and simplicity and historian within the plant. And what they're doing is then they have another historian uh, in AWS with operations hub and they have their own internal systems as well. They have about four internal systems. And so they're taking historian data as well as the internal, internal system data that they federated at that AWS cloud level. And they're, they're combining that all together into operations hub for their applications. And so the reason why I said that we're, we're looking to do more there is we do believe that over time, containerization will start becoming more prevalent within our industry. And the challenge of containerization right now has been more in regards to, it's been more focused with technologies like Docker uh, on Linux and Unix types of technologies, which requires a, a greater burden on, on, on customers to be able to then support both Windows and Linux. But that's changing. And so there also is now uh, Microsoft working with, uh, with Docker, for example, to start enabling containerization on Windows uh, environment as well. And so, uh, so the reason why I mentioned that is once you start having containerization, it's very easy to deploy something on premise or in the cloud in a very seamless manner. And so that's one thing we're looking to do with Operations Hub as well as with our other products as well. This is why we lined this guy up for this presentation because he's, <laughs> he's talking about he's got quite a depth on, on all this stuff. So um, again, if there's anything uh, too deep or that we need to drill into further, just just let us know. Raise your hand, ask a question in the window. It's, it's all, all great stuff. Um, looks like we, we could pivot a little bit on the questions, some different topics now, kind of moving up away from operations hub uh, for the moment. Um, one is around uh, CSense. So I think it's exciting to see uh, the CSense name active and you know, prevalent again in, in the portfolio roadmap and investment from GE. So the question that came from the group here is, are there any uh, specific CSense templates or analytics templates for verticals like uh, chemicals or mining or water, wastewater, et cetera? If you can talk to that. Yeah. So. Um... So one thing we're doing internally uh, within GE Digital is that we actually have what we call the analytics working group. And so myself, uh, Joe Gerstel, Steve Pawlowski and others are on that group. And, and a part of what we're doing there is um, uh, what we realized is across the GE Digital portfolio, we actually have a lot of analytics and, and like across different products and created by different folks. And like, so we have some created by our global research center. We had some created by some of our our foundries, like our parish foundry, like one that was created be created by for Anglican Water um, when it comes to actual the water process and, and ammonia um, in the water process and the usage of ammonia. And so, what we're looking to do actually is um, what we've been doing actually is going through reviewing all those analytics, 
uh, prioritizing them and our goal is to start then templating them and, and actually having them uh, unlocked it with CSense and Operations Hub. And so uh, the first one we're starting with, uh, as it, I kind of had mentioned, was a more uh, cross vertical, more generic analytic, which being sensor health, which will provide you more like uh, what, I'll, what I would call single variable forecasting. And so what I mean by that is uh, it looks at a single piece of data or a single tag and you're able to see when there's discrepancies or there's anomaly. And that could be due to like the frequency changing, that could be due to like going out of set point limits, for example. And so that's where we're starting as our first uh, kind of more templated analytic but there's more to come after that. And so we actually are going to that prioritization process right now, and we are looking across verticals. So uh, everything from like water, wastewater, when it comes to things like alarm rationalization, or like I mentioned, like actual, the chemical process, uh, as well as looking at things from more manufacturing perspective as well. And so, yeah, so we are, that, that will be coming. Uh, and there's a, I'm actually quite excited what we're doing there and how we're bringing this all together. And, um, and I'm excited to actually release some of those things to you guys uh, this year and also in the next year as well. Yeah, one of these days you're going to have all your out-of-the-box analytics just in your iFix and ready to go. You install iFix and you check the exactly. box that, that quick, right? I'm going to hold well, I think, you. You know, and I'll, I'll just mention one thing, but that's one reason why, like, uh, what we're doing with uh, having that common model service with uh, with Operations Hub and now with uh, we're building to iFix with the 6.5 release is so critical because by enabling you to have modeling at the lower levels, like at the SCADA level and the PLC level, it'll make it much easier for you to then start to leverage those analytics because then you can it makes it easier to have a common structure and model and semantics across those. Yeah, good point. Yeah, the, the common structures and models are a huge piece of this to be able to you know, simplify all the integrations and capabilities across the portfolio. So. Looking forward to seeing all that coming together. Um, I'm going to pivot again now to uh, a couple of iFix questions that actually came in here. So here's a good fun one for you, Rainbeer. So um, sure. Gibran wants to know, is iFix 6.5 moving away from VBA or uh, are you entertaining different languages or different capabilities? So a, a great question. And, and we are uh, not moving away as much as uh, entertaining different uh, technologies. And um, the one that we're definitely looking at is uh, Python. Uh, and and it, one reason why that's one of the key ones we're looking at uh, as a one to add is because what we're seeing is that uh, Python is relatively um, easy to learn and more and more uh, for folks uh, coming out of school, uh, even in uh, their more industrial types of uh, careers are learning that in school. So it actually gives them a quicker way to get up to speed and start uh, building their solutions within iFix. And the other key part of what we're seeing with Python is that it's becoming really the, a really rich library um, for not just scripting, but also for doing uh, data analysis and analytics. And there's, there's a rich uh, library now of also of, of actual an, um, machine learning frameworks for Python as well. And so we're, what we've been starting to look at now is how do we integrate it across the portfolio? So what you'll see is that with CSense, for example, now there is actually the ability to have Python scripts in CSense, but we are looking to actually see how we can leverage that across IFX Simplicity Operations Hub as well. And so part of that being, we want to have client-side scripting Operations Hub as well. Great, thanks, Rambir. Our ne next question related to uh, IFIX, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna change the wording of this a little bit because they're asking what the advantages of IFIX 6.5 are over 6.0. So I'll say, what are the top three advantages that customers are gonna see as, as of the release of uh, 6.5? So, yeah, so uh, number one is a reduction of time to be able to, uh, to be able to connect, manage and build your solutions. And so, so that's like what we're really focused on is reducing that time and so how we're doing that is really by leveraging that model. And so by having a model and template based solutions. Uh, and so the other part of that is that enables you to be able to leverage any structure that's been created also in the PLC. Another great thing we're doing um, is a performance improvements. Um, there is like, depending on the scale of your system, like uh, I've seen uh, I've seen this, I, that was demonstrated to me. It was, and I saw the actual, um, metrics on this is like we've actually improved things like the import export of the PDD database by a 12x factor. Um, and so we're really do focusing on some aspects of also improving performance for those customers of the larger scale deployments as well. Um, so yeah, so to me, like the, the model, the structure is the main one. Uh, and then the other one is uh, the third one I'd say is coming back to 
enabling more mobile visualization by having the integration with Operations Hub. And so now you will have a, uh, as the next question here is about a, a low code, no code environment to be able to browse either the model or the flat tags from iFix and be able to actually build screens in an ad hoc manner uh, without actually being a software developer and really requiring, uh, you know, in a more traditional, like with, um, with Workspace, I, would, I can articulate that to be like you still in many cases, you, know, you could use the Dynamo or you can be creating something in a more granular level that you have to build as an object uh, versus with operations that we provide more modern way to do things by providing you widgets and providing a more like a, a more WYSIWYG way of actually laying out those widgets into a more grid type solution of creating your screens. Thanks, Ron Baronet. And I think the next question here is actually somewhat related to that. It was, uh, what, what's GE's plan for a low-code development initiative? Yeah, so it's, uh, I love the question, Toro. So uh, that is our goal with Operations Hub. And uh, we will uh, please join this afternoon. So um, it will be Dave doing most of the heavy lifting of the presentation in the afternoon. I'll be asked, peppering him with questions. Um, but we will actually do a demo of Operations Hub. And we'll go through some more details of how that is our our low code, no code environment to enable you to build solutions. And as I mentioned, not just with our GE Prophecy portfolio products, but third party products as well. Great, thanks for your beer. I think those are all the questions that actually were asked here in the chat Q and A window. So awesome stuff. Thank you everyone for, uh, for throwing all those questions out there. We still have a handful of people on. I, I, I think at this point, we're willing to open it up for some verbal questions. If you wanna, if you want to ask, raise your hand, get the little blue icon up there, and we'll put you put you on the spot, get you on the audio, <laughs> and you have an interactive discussion here with Randy or myself. Any takers for that? Is everybody going to be shy? I saw like two drop offs. I guess they had enough of you, Randy. Oh, here we have one. <laughs> All right, we have Arturo who would like to ask a question. So, Arturo, I'm going to switch you to talk. Sure. Be able to go here in just a moment. Yes, uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Taro. Yes, uh, I guess uh, my main question is, the, what are the biggest challenges for adoption of some of the technologies that are being rolled out and uh, by an organization? Is it, uh, you know, depending upon their IoT maturity in the model, uh, what has been the, the biggest you know, hurdle? or, in, you know, adoption by an organization? So, a good question. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's a challenging question to answer. I'll tell you, there's a few things. One, I would say is that uh, what I always, like, number one is always, like, how do you actually uh, adopt, uh, adopt and change uh, with uh, the minimum amount of downtime, right, is, is a fundamental thing that our customers are looking at. Uh, even if it's about it, uh, being able to update new versions. So that's kind of a starting point. Um, but I, what I would say is like, what we have seen is um, customers have challenges because they don't create, um, they don't start by creating a strong foundation of normalization across their systems. And so what I mean by that is like, if they have, like, you know, you, you start with, um, you have multiple plans and you have, different uh, technologies there and different systems and and trying to go from that and immediately try to say okay let's go build analytics it is a really hard thing to do and so what what they really we have found is like that that is the hardest thing is if someone says okay hey start giving me now immediately uh from iot uh automated automatic analytics uh, and with what i have today that is a, almost an impossible task versus doing incrementally. And, and I kind of back, come back to what I said earlier. So what I've, what we've really seen, the people that are most successful are customers that actually have have a kind of uh, a enterprise strategy where they start normalizing data. Uh, the number one thing that challenging normalizing data we have found is actually making sure that you have good quality data. So like you, most customers spend quite a bit of time making sure that, okay, the data is normalized and it's good. And then it's really about then incrementally doing everything else. And so most customers, most customers with normalizing data have good quality data and they do small changes and doing the changes with an actual goal in mind. Um, so uh, if you try to do digitization and you're like, okay, well, let's just digitize everything and, and things will get better, but you haven't identified a problem that you're trying to solve 
or an area that you want to focus in, it's really hard to actually see the ROI on that. And so, so I would say that's the other key part is like the learnings from our customers. And what we've seen is like, make sure that you also say, okay, this is where we're going to start. Here's a small place for us to start with the pilot POC. And this is the problem that we're trying to address with that. And then after you knock off that one thing, then go into the next thing versus trying to do everything at one time across all levels. Thanks, Ravier. Appreciate the good answer there. And, and Arturia, thank you for getting on. So I appreciate somebody else jumping on as well. So <laughs> thanks a lot for, for doing that, Arturia. Yeah, thanks. Ravier. Sorry, I already muted him. So if you try to speak again, <laughs> sorry. No problem. It's yeah, okay. Just to reiterate, if anybody else has any other live questions they'd like to ask, it's a great format for doing it. We've got uh, a few minutes left here to be able to do that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to read another question that came in through the chat window. Um, Rebir, this is back to the, to the iFix side of it. Uh, what about local language support, specifically German and Chinese for uh, the latest iFix versions? Can you talk to that a little bit? Uh, yes, and I I don't off, I apologize. I don't remember at the top of my head what we support in 6.0, but we generally do language packs we, uh, with, uh, with all of our releases. And Chinese, German are some of the languages that we do support. I will follow up um, on what's what we've done, we've done it with 5.9. I believe with 6.0, we currently don't have a, a Chinese in the language pack, but it's something we will be looking at. And so let us know what you're looking for there and we can give you more details. I will also tell you that um, in that roadmap slide, which you saw there's a lot there, uh, on the operations hub side as well, uh, we will be releasing a language pack off of the, I believe it'll be off the 1.7 release, which will support um, it's going to support Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. So we're starting that with that from a, from a language pack for Operations Hub. Uh, and we support Japanese today in the 1.6, and so we'll add Chinese and Korean. And then we'll be adding more languages there as well. Um, so yeah, so please uh, reach out to myself uh, offline, and uh, we can give you some more clarity there. I can get to the details of what we have with the 6.0 release. Uh, and also, um, in regards to specifically uh, the HMI SCADAs. One thing I'll also mention is tomorrow in the water wastewater call, Scott Dehame, who is the iFix product manager, will actually be presenting with Prasad, who is uh, one of our marketing leaders, uh, strategic marketing leaders. And so uh, please also join that there as well as you can actually pepper them with some questions as well, which will be fantastic.